Welcome back. In the previous segment, we discussed a very simple real life problem and we wrote a program for it. This was the bargaining problem. Now we are going to consider a slightly more complicated problem which is also resembling a real life problem. So this is about simulating a water tank. So we have a water tank which has capacity some C, C liters and initially it is empty. And you can perform one of three operations with respect to this tank. So you can add water to it and let us say this operation will be performed and as far as the computer is concerned to add water into the tank you will type plus followed by the amount you want to add in liters. Okay? Now if you add water to a tank it may overflow. Okay, so you may, you may be adding too much water. So in which case water will be wasted. Okay? So you are expected to report, your program is expected to report how much water is wasted. Okay? Or you may attempt to take Q liters out of the tank. Okay? So somebody will, somebody say walks to the tank and says give me 15 liters. Now if the tank has 15 liters, then you will give 15 liters. But if the tank does not have 15 liters, you will give whatever is there, but you will say how much you actually have given. Okay? And these commands will keep on coming at you and you, will be, you have to respond to them properly. And note that means that you need to know at each step how much water is there in the tank. Okay? So this is an example of a system in which there is some state. The state is how much water is present. And what the external world is doing to the tank? Well, it is sending some commands as a result of which the system reacts and it produces an output and in addition its state also changes. Okay? So it may give you some water, it may take some water from you and at the same time its state will change and it will print out some messages. So these are the things that, that we want our program to do. Okay? So this kind of thing happens quite frequently. You, may, you, are, you are trying to keep track of a real life system and you are trying to see how it responds as external communication happens to it. So instead of a water tank for example, this might be a bank account and you may be withdrawing money from it, you may be depositing money from it, it is all really very similar. And of course, there is an additional command possible x. So if you type x, then that is a signal to the program that look, stop, okay. close everything, uh, so just exit the program. Okay. All right. So now what we are going to do is, we are going to write the code for this and this time I am going to write it along with you. So let us see, this is going to be a bit of, a bit of a long code, but I will write it with you. So let me try it out. So let me open a new file, say new tank.cpp. Okay, so let me put down hash include simple cpp. Okay. Oh, what am I doing? So, 1 m. Then let me start the main program. Okay. So, how do we go about this? What do we need to, what do we, what variables do we need to have? Well, we need to clearly keep track of what, uh, what, how much water is there in our, uh, in our tank. So we need to know what is the current, the current, uh, the, the, the current content. Okay? So we will need a variable for that. And we also would like to have, we would also like to know what, how, what is the capacity. 
So, we will have variables for both of these. So, let us just for fun make the capacity be 30 liters and then let us let us have a, a variable say called current and let us say initially it is empty. So, this variable current tells you how much water is there in the tank at the current time. Okay. All right. Now, so this is this is the these are the sort of main variables we need. Well, this is not a variable, capacity is not a variable, but instead of putting in 30 everywhere in our program, it is better to give it a name. So we could have even made this a constant, but never mind, doesn't it's not so important right now. Okay, so what happens next? So now we are going to simulate the execution of the system. Okay. So this has to be done as a while loop which just keeps running. So while and since it keeps running we are not yet ready to decide whether to terminate it, we will give the condition as being true. Okay, so what is the first thing we do in each iteration? Well in each iteration we have to ask the user to type something. So we have, we have to expect a command from the user. Okay. So that command is going to be a single letter command followed by possibly a number. So we want to have some variable in which to receive that command and so it is customary to have say char command. And then we will do c in into command. Okay, so at this point we have got the first letter that the user has typed into our variable called command. So if that letter is x then we have to execute, we have to exit. So let us just put that down. So if command equal to equal to x and let us say it is just lowercase x, okay, then we will break. Okay. So break and that will be the end of the program as well, there will be nothing following this loop. Okay. Otherwise we should check whether the user wants to add water or the user wants to take out water. So if command is equal to say plus, then what should you do? This we want to put over here. Okay, so if the user typed a plus then we know that the user is going to add water and so we should expect the user to type in a number. Okay, so for that we will have int some quantity and we will say c in into quantity. Okay, now here I am assuming that quantity is going to be an integer uh, is uh, sorry let us make it a double we said this is supposed to be double right. So our capacity is double so might as well make this double. Okay. But we, we want this quantity to be a positive number. So if somebody types add I want to add negative minus 30 so there is probably something wrong. So we should probably be checking but let us say that, that such mistakes are not made. Okay. And after a plus the user will be sensible enough to type in a positive number. Okay? So then this is fine. Okay, so what should we do at this point? So the user wants to add QTY into current. Okay? So there is a possibility of an overflow and we are expected to report how much overflow is there. Okay? So, here is what I am going to do, I am just going to first add it to current. So I am going to say equals current plus QTY. Now I will check if current equals, sorry, if current is greater than capacity, then what should I do? Well, 
then now I have to print out how much water is wasted. So how much is wasted? So the amount of wastage is So how much is wasted? Well, everything above the capacity is wasted. So this quantity, the wasted quantity is current minus capacity. Okay, is that all? Well, no, our current is above capacity and we just remove something out of it. So we should leave it with the actual current value. Okay? So, it, so when we pour it went above capacity, but we know that it cannot go above capacity. Okay? So whatever goes above capacity is wasted. So we should leave current equals capacity. Okay? If current is less than or equal to capacity, we have to do nothing and therefore that is that is enough. Okay? So this is the processing we need to do if our uh, command was a plus. Okay? Else if command is minus, what do we need to do? Well, Again we need to do something similar, we, ex we are expecting the user to type in a number, a quantity. So let us do that, so double QTY and CN into QTY. Okay, so the user has typed in something and maybe the user has demanded something more than what we have available. So I guess at this point we should check. So we should say if QTY is bigger than current, then what happens? So if, if the quantity demanded is bigger than the current quantity, then how much are we going to give? Okay. So we are going to give giving QTY. Okay. And we should change the current value. So how much uh, is how much value uh, remains? Well, we are giving sorry, we are not giving QTY, we are giving current because QTY was bigger. Okay, so how much remains? So then current is equal to 0. Okay, so this is what happens if QTY is bigger than current. What if it is less than or equal to current? In which case how much are we going to give? Okay, I should have not typed semicolon over here but a colon. Okay, how much are we giving? Well, in this case we are we are giving whatever is demanded. And what is the new value? So this is equal to current minus what we gave. So that is it. Okay, so that is the end of this minus command processing. Okay. Now here maybe the user types in some other character. So maybe we really should put in else C out invalid command.
and that is the end of the loop. Okay. So, this is going to get repeated and this if you exit out of it that is going to end the program. Okay, so, to make this a little bit more understandable, let us say that before the, the user types anything, we will print out how much water is there currently. Okay. So, we can print say C out currently we have so much water. Okay. So, let us see how, how this works. So, let me try compiling it. Okay. It seems to have compiled no errors, maybe I did not make any errors while typing it out. Okay. So, it is telling me currently we have 0. So, let us say let me add something. So, let me add maybe 50. Okay, so, it says you wasted 20, currently we have 30, is that right? Well, it is because the capacity of that uh, tank is 30. Okay, so, maybe let us take away something. So, let us say minus 15. So, it is giving 15 and what remains is 15. Okay, so, let us try minus 20. So, you asked for 20, but it is only giving you 15. Is that reasonable? Well, yes, it only has 15. And after giving you 15, it only has 0, which is, which is good, which is, which is as you might expect. Okay. So, uh, oh, let us try to take a little bit more. So, maybe minus 10. Okay. So, it is not giving you anything because it does not have anything okay. and it continues to have nothing. Okay. So, maybe we will add say plus 35 okay or let's say let's add plus 25 okay so it says currently we have 25 but notice that it didn't print out a message saying something was wasted because nothing was wasted okay so this seems like a reasonable a correct program so we can get out of it let's see will we get out of it yes okay so that's it so that's this program so, let me get back to the presentation now. So, we did this. So, what did we discuss in this segment? So, we discussed a simple example of a real life system. Okay. This system does have state, how much water is in the tank and the system has well defined operations, add water or remove water. And the operations are slightly complex because of the possibility of overflow and underflow. Okay. So, I want to point out that this may seem like a trivial system and in a sense it is, but it is an example of a system which has a state and which has operations allowed. Okay. So, you will see systems which are mo just more complicated versions of this. And there is a basic loop when dealing with such a system that you wait for the environment to say something, maybe make a request, then the system responds to it and prints out some out a message and it changes its state. Okay. All right. So, that is what we wanted to say on this topic. In the next segment, we will talk about a different topic that of arithmetic on very large numbers. So, we will take a break.